I'm Mike, and today how the instant meat allergy works, what it does to you, and if vegans are engineering it to reduce animal suffering. Is a vegan conspiracy afoot? And because I know people are gonna be asking about this in the comments, yes, I do have a bandage on my head. I hit my nose head on a plank of wood in the dark. I'll just maybe do this or something. Okay, a little bit of background. The meat allergy or red meat anaphylaxis was originally dismissed by allergists, but now as they will assure you and the scientific literature will assure you, it is very real. It is just a new phenomenon. As this paper highlighted, the first description was just six or seven years ago on a couple dozen cases, but by 2012, quote, it was clear that there are thousands of cases across a large area of the southern and eastern United States. So what in meat do people actually become allergic to? Well, the answer is alpha-gal, which is short for galactose alpha-1,3-galactose, which is an animal-based carbohydrate molecule. Not a superhero, sadly. It is only found in mammals that are not monkeys or apes like us, so a cannibal would have nothing to worry about. But it's incorrect to say that it would force you to go vegetarian because alpha-gal is not present in birds and fish. And this is not just some tingly lips allergic reaction, this is a pretty brutal reaction. It sends you into a state of anaphylaxis, which is of course literally described as a severe or life-threatening allergic reaction. And as this paper shows, it is no less severe in this case. Sufferers describe migraines, difficulty breathing, chest pain, hive, stomach pains, and one said, quote, constipation and a constant feeling of diarrhea at the same time, not to be confused with your average trip to McDonald's. And the reason this is so tricky is that it can be delayed about three to six hours, so it's really hard to connect the dots to what caused it. But surprisingly, this isn't usually a permanent condition. Depending on the source, many people just get it from five months all the way to five years, but some people have said they've had it for 15 or 30 years. Now for how it happens is from one of those things that we all hate, ticks. Ticks are the primary, if not the only cause of the alpha-gal allergy. Literally, over 80% of people who have this allergy report getting a tick bite. So is the tick another creature that produces alpha-gal? No, it has to be more gross and complicated than that. A tick has to have fed on a mammal, have some residual alpha-gal from animal cells in its mouth, then bite you and inject that alpha-gal with its nasty numbing spit into your body, in which case your body will then have an immune response and tag it as a foreign invader. So next time it sees alpha-gal, if and when you eat meat, then your body will flip out. This of course leads to that anaphylaxis, and in those who have the immune reaction, you can actually measure the level of alpha-gal antibody in their system. In the US, the main culprit is the Lone Star Tick, which requires a minimum of three hosts to feed on throughout its lifetime, making it a perfect transmitter of the alpha-gal molecule. And the way they discovered it was the Lone Star Tick was because this map of their habitat happened to perfectly coincide with virtually all cases of this red meat allergy. And you have to admit, alpha-gal, the Lone Star Tick, there's a bit of a ring to it. Alpha Gal and the Lone Star Tick, coming to your immune system this summer, saving animals one anaphylaxis at a time. But it is important to note that the prevalence of this really isn't that high. In the US, we have in the realm of about 2,000 cases of this, and despite what the comment section would like you to believe, I am aware that there is a world outside of the US, and this is also an issue in Europe and Australia. In Europe, it is the castor bean tick that has caused a few hundred cases. Whew, good luck dodging that range. Well, in Australia, it is the paralysis tick, pretty much just on the east coast, though that is where most of the population is. So why are we just finding out about this emerging allergy now? How did we miss it for all of human history? Well, the answer might be that it is massively increasing due to climate change. Studies are showing that a shifting climate not only changes the amount of time in which ticks feed, increasing it, but it can also increase their range of habitat. As these maps show, we are already seeing a shift upward of our climate zones, at least here in the US. And as this study shows, the range of ticks 
could more than double in the next couple generations. Now for another interesting and completely different leg of this story, and that is the cancer treatment cetuximab. People are having severe allergic reactions to this, and in rare cases, deadly reactions, as it turns out, quote, geographical distribution of the reaction to cetuximab overlapped the same geographical area where red meat reactions were occurring. Why? Because there is alpha-gal in it. Now, as a vegan, I've come to expect that people will shove animal products in every possible place they can, but this one is pretty next level. The important part is how it's made and what it's made of. Cetuximab is comprised of monoclonal antibodies. They are made by taking human cancer cells and hybridizing them with mouse immune cells. This creates what are called chimeric antibodies. Yes, that kind of chimera. Freaky stuff. They then inject these hybrid cells into the abdominal cavity of living mice, where they then propagate antibodies and harvest them. As this NIH paper put it, they could grow them in a petri dish, but that can be, quote, expensive and time consuming. The suffering of these mice is horrid, and you can read more about that in the links I will share below. But it's no surprise that cetuximab has alpha gal in it because you are culturing this thing inside of a mammal. The most ironic part of all of this, cetuximab is mainly a colorectal cancer treatment. Yes, which we know is probably caused by red meat and absolutely caused, in certain cases, by processed meat. So it is very possible that somebody gets colorectal cancer as a result of eating cute, innocent animals and then tortures more, even littler, cute, innocent animals in order to get a treatment. Go humans! But hey, it might give you a few extra months of life, though that pales in comparison to any dietary prevention, like how high consumption of red meat increases risk of colorectal cancer by 28%. Moving on. Okay, so isn't it just really convenient that in a time of vegan activism, people just all of a sudden develop a meat allergy? Is it a vegan conspiracy? From this article, quote, it's like a zombie film in reverse. An outbreak of ticks is succeeding where environmental statistics, health warnings, and pictures of cute animals have failed, turning hardened meat eaters vegetarian. It's just too convenient, vegans. No, was there some type of mad scientist vegan just genetically engineering these ticks to inject alpha-gal? No, for many reasons. First of all, alpha-gal has been in mammals for as long as humans have been around. People have probably been getting this in really rare cases for as long as humans and ticks and mammals have been in the same place. But playing along for a second, if somebody were to do this, my money would be on Elizabeth Holmes, vegan and youngest self-made female billionaire in the world, who got rich by starting a blood testing company. Obviously, she didn't, but if she did want to, it would be more effective to genetically engineer mosquitoes to produce alpha-gal in their saliva. I'm totally joking. It's all a joke. Federal agents here to see one, uh, Mike the it Vegan? It was Elizabeth's idea. Or it could be those darn ticks conspiring together, making them the most hypocritical animal rights activists in the world. No, people, the meat allergy is just nature doing its thing. Okay, so in conclusion, the meat allergy sucks for you. Seriously, I have no sympathy for the adults, at least, that suffer from this allergy. You're literally eating an animal that doesn't want to die. You don't have to be spiritual in any way to appreciate the karmic logic here. You pay for innocent animals to be killed so that you can eat them, and a few hours later, you feel like crap. I'm just saying, and that's the truth of it, and if I were to be really vegan and go further and say that the meat allergy makes you a better person, people would absolutely be flipping out, so I won't say it. Instead, I will point to Amy Pearl, who has the meat allergy and was previously an avid meat lover, barbecue enthusiast. Here is what she told Radiolab. I don't know if I would go back to eating meat necessarily. I wish I could be vegetarian for ethical reasons. It's like we're all evolving to be on this planet, which is getting harder to be on. We know that meat takes a lot of resources. The tick is helping me evolve into a better human being. I think I'll just leave you with that quote. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to let me know down below what you thought about this fascinating topic or whether you even know anybody that has the meat allergy. All right, feel free to like and subscribe and thank you for watching.